children welcome to social studies digital class how are you all are you all excited for the new topic a new lesson today okay shall we begin children imagine a situation that you are sitting in the class and one of your friend wants to come into the class and takes the permission of the teacher but the teacher ask him to sit down or sit near the door instead of giving permission to him to enter into the class and sit on the bench along with his friends how do you feel children you feel that why the teacher is not allowing your friend to sit along with you and uh, why the teacher is asking him to sit on the floor and imagine what the situation of your friend must be he feels why the teacher is not treating equally why the teacher is discriminating isn't it so today we are going to discuss about the topic caste discrimination similar situations happened about uh, so many times that is uh, hundreds and thousands of times but they were they occurred during pre independent times children not only children but everyone who belong to a particular caste were not treated equally they were discriminated so let us today discuss about the topic caste discrimination and how the leaders of our country strived for equality and at last achieved it also so let us go for the lesson children caste discrimination and the struggle for equality children now you must be getting a doubt that what is a caste isn't it so when a group of people separate themselves from others and follow their own customs traditions cultures and values so that group can be called as a caste a large number of people in our country think of themselves belonging to some caste or the other they belong to one caste or they belong to the other caste and they follow some common customs and traditions and they also worship a particular deity means they have same common customs and traditions and they also worship a deity in the sense the goddess or the god and they also marry within their caste in the sense they doesn't like to marry the person out of their caste generally they prefer getting married to the person within their caste only and they even put the names of their caste as a part of their own names they also keep the name of their caste in the front before their names so this is how the caste system the people would prefer to be like that and even caste system has created some bonds among the particular groups and separated them from the other groups that is a uh, caste system it has developed a bond in the sense they have close relationships because they follow same traditions same customs and they even marry the person who belong to that particular caste only in the sense a lot of closeness or a bond like is created among the people and it has also made them their caste distinct or different from others as a separate group but it has also created some kind of problems what are those problems however the caste has given rise to greater inequalities and discriminations in our societies so the problems such as the people who are superior they disrespect the people who belong to a lower caste so how did it has happened let us try to understand people go for different professions such as some go for teaching some also go for carpentry some prefer doing weaving fishery 
pottery and farming how do you think they follow this particular profession because their ancestors have been doing so or sometimes it may be as per their will or wish so there are other kind of activities also such as cleaning or it can be washing cutting hair picking up the garbage these tasks are also people have been doing because their ancestors their great grandfathers their grandfathers have been doing so but here these activities were considered as impure and dirty when compared to the previous ones so this is how the discrimination or the difference has been started this belief of the caste system has created a lot of discrimination among the people it has created some it it has been like a ladder where the people who put themselves who placed themselves at the top called themselves as superiors and they put some of the people at the bottom of the ladder and they called them as untouchables so this is how a lot of discrimination in the society has been started children some groups of people were allowed to pick garbage and remove the dead animals from the village but they were not allowed to enter into the homes of the upper caste or take water from the village well enter into the temples or their children sitting along with the other children dr b r ambedkar he was the chairperson of the committee for drafting constitution of india and he was also the first union law minister of india he also suffered because of this caste discrimination and he narrates a story of his childhood when he was only 9 years old in the year 1901 so what has happened let us understand dr b r ambedkar his brother and cousins they went in in the train to maharashtra they wanted to go to koregaon in maharashtra where his father is staying so they waited near the station for a long period of time neither his father nor the servant turned up to pick them up so it was observed by the station master who while talking discussed about who they were he asked them who are you and when b r ambedkar burst out saying we are mahars mahars is a low caste in maharashtra the face of station master changed completely and he went away from that place and not only that he was not talking to them properly neither any cartman near the station allowed these children to reach to koregaon in their carts so doesn't want their carts to get polluted so this was a insulting and a hurting situation for these children so they felt very bad and at that time itself dr b r ambedkar faced the caste discrimination children there is another incident let us understand it is about om prakash valmiki he was a writer for the book jhutan it was his autobiography autobiography in the sense the book written by him and the story is also his own story which is called as autobiography biography in the sense somebody else's story is written by a person it is called as biography when he himself write his own story it is called as autobiography so om prakash valmiki was also made to sit on the floor or at the back behind all the children or sometimes near the door and he was also made to sweep the school and the playground and this came to an end when his father saw him doing so 
and he confronted the teachers. He went to them and said that this is not correct to do injustice to these children. Not only he will come to the school, like him so many children will come to the school and get education and you have to teach them. These were the words of uh, Om Prakash Valmiki's father who was also uh, hugely insulted and uh, he was very much hurt because of this caste discrimination. Children, these two incidents make us understand that how serious and how in depth was the caste discrimination during that time. So, was this caste system every time from the beginning of the human era? So, let us try to understand. So, before that children, you have an activity, uh, you need to discuss with your parents or grandparents about how caste system functioned earlier to find out what has changed and what has not. Prepare a report and discuss in the class. Children, now let us go for understanding had the caste system been always there or is it a new concept or when it has been started. So, during the time of hunter gatherers or early men, there was no caste system only. So, it was during the time of Vedas, the caste system has been emerged. Under the caste system, there were four categories or four classes. So, the topmost class, they were Brahmins or the priest. According to the work, this caste uh, have been divided and the Brahmins were the priest, those who do the worship in the temples. So, they were considered as topmost in the caste system and Kshatriyas, they were the rulers or warriors. The third one are the merchants and landowners, they were the Vaishyas and Sudras were peasants, commoners and servants, they were called as Sudras and the ones who were doing the cleaning or sweeping or those, uh, those all people does not come under the caste system and they were considered as untouchables or out of caste. Children, they were how the, this was how the people were divided according to their professions, ok. The one who were the worshippers, they were considered as Brahmins, the rulers those who were the fighters, those who were the ruler of a kingdom, they were called the Kshatriyas and the merchants, they were the Vaishyas and the commoners, they were the Sudras. So, this is how according to the profession, the caste system was originally divided, but the discrimination has started from the time of Vedas itself. There were so many thinkers during the earlier times who criticized the caste system and felt that they are, everyone is equal, all are equal. The thinkers such as Buddha, Gautam Buddha, Mahavira, Ramanuja, Basava, Rahim Das and Vemana. These were all the thinkers who criticized the caste system and they said that no one is superior based upon the caste or profession and everyone is equal and everyone will get the salvation or moksha depending upon the deeds that they do. If they are good, they will attain the salvation. Good deeds will lead to salvation. Children, then after independence, the struggle to remove the inequality and establish equality and based upon human grounds and even brotherhoodness. So, there was uh, a lot of struggle that has started among the uh, leaders as well as the commoners. So, the striving for the equality has been started just at the time of after independence. So, let us study how it is. In the 19th century and 20th century, several social reformers fought to create a new social system based on freedom, equality, brotherhood, brotherhoodness, 
human dignity and economic justice. So, who were those leaders? They include the leaders Jyoti Rao Phule, Savitri Bhai Phule, Periyar, E. V. Ramasami Naikar, Sri Narayan Guru and Ayankali. So, these all over India people started struggling and striving to establish equality all over India. So, what has happened in Telangana? So, during colonial period in Telangana region 2, social mobilization emerged. People started moving from different uh, one place to another and even from Telangana people could reach all over India and they tried to understand the positions in Telangana and even they started understanding the positions in all over India also. And they found similar situations and they also wanted to eradicate inequality that was existing in Telangana too. So, who were those leaders? Some of the important leaders involved in it were P. Venkat Swami, Ishwari Bai, T. N. Sadalakshmi, C. S. Itirajan, Arige Ramaswami, M. Venkat Swami, B. S. Venkat Rao, etc. So, these were all the leaders. And now let us understand about one such leader in Telangana who worked for the establishment of equality in Telangana also. B. S. Venkat Rao, he was popularly known as Rao Saheb. Okay. So, Batula Venkat Rao was born in Khasmandi, Hyderabad. So, his father who was uh, Batula Sayanna, who was a domestic servant of Europeans and he uh, studied up to 9th standard. Batula Venkat Rao studied up to 9th standard, but he was fluent in so many languages such as he was good in English, Urdu, Persian and Marathi and he was also very good in Telugu. Worked as a sculptor in Pune before joining the uh, Nizam government in public works department. So, he rose to a high position in Nizam government prior to independence and he determined to eradicate untouchability after experiencing it in the society. He became very strong in his thoughts to eradicate the untouchability completely from the society because he felt it as a discriminating factor. He felt this as a wrong thing and he felt it should be completely eliminated from the society. Then Adi Dravida Sangam was formed with the objective in 1922 with the assistance of people like M. Govindaraju and M. Venkata Swami. In the year April 1927, Adi Hindu Mahasabha was formed and after a decade, a youth league of Ambedkarites was formed with the objective of getting Dalit educated youth to propagate awareness among them about the exploitation based on caste. They wanted the educated youth to understand that the exploitation based on caste is being done. B. S. Venkat Rao's contribution to Dalit's upliftment was recognized by Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar who invited to preside over Bombay Presidency Mahar Conference in 1936 at Bombay. So, his uh, work was recognized all over India and he was invited to preside over the conference which was held in 1936 at Bombay. Children, Nizams, they also felt that the discrimination is wrong and it should be eradicated. So, Nizam of the time he constituted the depressed class fund and sanctioned 1 crore rupees for his work towards the elimination of the inequality in the society. He was elected to the Rajya Sabha by state legislative assembly after 1952. Children, after independence, how the situation arose and how the struggles were started to completely eradicate the 
inequality from the society. So, leaders thought different plans, different policies and they made the laws and they wanted these laws to be implemented so that inequality could be completely eradicated from the society. So, what are those laws? Let us see. Leaders set out a vision and goals in the constitution to ensure that all the people of India are considered as equal. It is not just by saying that all are equal. So, everyone should understand that they are equal and they should follow this equality. So, such laws have, were made by the leaders with their visionary ideas. Untouchability is seen as crime and has been legally abolished by the law. So, untouchability is a crime. Crime means it is completely a wrong thing for what the punishment also will be there. If somebody is following untouchability, they are not asking the people to, they are asking the people not to drink the water or not to enter a particular place or the temple, then such people, if they are reported into the police station or in by the, in a court of law, they are severely punishable. So, the laws are made and the government made those laws to be implemented also. Children, the two ways the government tried to implement the equality guaranteed in the constitution. What are those two ways? That is through the laws and the second is through schemes for disadvantaged communities. So, through the laws is passing in the legislature and making it into an act. So, that is the first thing and also introducing different schemes such as there are number of schemes implemented. One such scheme is midday meal scheme. So, this kind of schemes also the government tries to lessen the inequality and try to bring equality among all the people of the country. So, let us understand the midday meal scheme. One such scheme was midday meal scheme as I said. So, Tamil Nadu was the first state to introduce this scheme and in 2001 the Supreme Court asked the state governments, all the state governments to begin this scheme within 6 months. So, what are the positive effects of this midday meal scheme? Children, you must be knowing this midday meal scheme. So, you all must be experiencing this midday meal scheme, isn't it? All the children sitting together and eating the food with different menus every day, isn't it? And you will chit chat with each other and you will enjoy the food which is served by the school authorities. So, that was nothing, that is nothing but the midday meal and this is a plan implemented by the government in all the government schools. So, children now let us see what are the positive effects of this midday meal scheme after it has been implemented. The attendance of the children improved. Earlier there was less attendance, okay, because uh, either parents were busy in their work and they used to even take their children along with them so that they can earn some bread and butter for themselves as well as the child could earn his bread and butter by himself. So, that was the situation. Now, because the food is being served by the government in the school itself. So, what has happened? The children were happily coming to the school so that they can go get good food for themselves and parents also are relieved that they felt happy that the food is being served along with the education in the school itself. And the next one is mother's work was not interrupted in feeding their children. Earlier mother used to stay back at home. She was there because she has to cook food for her children. She was there because she has to cook for children. But now because the midday meal that is afternoon food is being served in the school, they were relieved and they can happily go to the work and the children would go to the school, get education and even get the food also. Then all children despite their caste eat the meals together. You must have observed this every child sitting together. They were all sitting together and they were eating. Then forget about that certain thing called caste exist. 
and they will be friendly among themselves. So, this uh, the mindset of the children will change, they will forget that this is a caste and they have to follow it, all such thoughts will get eliminated from the mindset of the child. So, this is also a very important aspect. Then the next is women from deprived class and Dalit women got the opportunity to cook the meals and get the employment. So, who were cooking there? It is not the work of the teacher or the other persons, but the women were appointed to cook the food. And who were those women? They were the destitute alone who there were in whose homes there is no uh, income sources. So, such women were appointed as cooks so that they can get the food for themselves and they can become economically independent. And it reduced the hunger of the school children and concentrate on studies. Earlier they were very hungry and with a hungry stomach even something is thought it does not enter into the mind, is not it children. So, now because meal is served to them, now they started concentrating on the studies and their grades improved. So, this is also an important aspect and a positive effect of the midday meal scheme. Children, I hope you are able to understand. It is true that the laws are made and changes are seen, but the true equality is yet to come. So, when laws are made, it is something forcefully done, but the true or uh, real equality still needs to come. Why? Because the mindset of the people has to change, unless it changes, unless they consider themselves as equal and no one is superior or less and everybody is uh, made by God and there is only one God and we should worship him, then only the true equality comes into existence. It is not just if it is written in the books or made the laws, laws are made, but the true mindset has to be changed among the people. People still have to change their attitudes and believe that they are equal and there is no inferior, no one is inferior, everyone all are equal and only then equality can be established and it is a continuous struggle. Means it is not just the laws are made and the work of the people, the work of the government is done until and unless the entire change, the mindset of the people start behaving with each other, with equality, with respect, with brotherhoodness until unless then that the equality still has not come. So, it is a continuous struggle and people are till now struggling to bring equality and finally, a good a, a real society with equal justice and law could be established. Children, the next thing is individuals and various communities have to contribute to achieve this. It is not just the work of one person, all the individuals together and even all the communities also should struggle and give their support in establishing the equality in the entire society. Only then a true society with real aspects of equality could be established. Children, with this we have come to the end part. Now, here is an activity for you. So, find out about a government scheme in your area, right? few sentences about it, few sentences about it. Children, we have till now discussed about midday meal scheme. So, you find out in your area, in your locality, any such government scheme is running and if it is there, write few sentences about it. Children, we have come to the end of the class. You need to answer this question and test your knowledge. The first question is, in what ways do you think caste system promote inequality among people. The second question is, if you were in the place of Om Prakash Valmiki, how would you feel? Write four lines about it. 
or you can write a question in the place of Om Prakash Valmiki, you can write Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. So, whatever it is, write four sentences. If you are in the place of them, how would you feel? The third question is, write about B.S. Venkat Rao and his struggle to bring equality in Telangana. Fourth question is, list out the benefits of midday meal program in our country. Children, you have to read the textbook carefully and try to understand the untouchability, the caste system, how it existed by your own. Listen to this and even read the textbook compulsorily so that you can get a better understanding of the entire lesson. And you also make your mindset that everyone in the society is equal and you should give respect to others and others also will give respect to you. And there is no such concept of caste or caste discrimination exists in the present society. Eliminate such kind of things from the mind so that a true, real and a happy, peaceful world can be established around you. For better understanding of the concepts, children, go through the worksheets. Children, I hope you have understood the lesson in a better way. We will meet in the next session. Until then, take care. Thank you.